So just a quick uh, overview of the bowel anatomy. So you have the foregut, which is from the stomach to the second part of the duodenum where the ampulla vata comes in, and that's where the uh, exocrine pancreatic secretions come in. Its blood supply is the celiac trunk or celiac axis, which comes off at T12, which is the first of three unpaired arteries coming off of the, uh, the aorta, um, just inferior to the diaphragm. Next is the midgut, which is from the distal duodenum to the proximal two-thirds of the transverse colon, and it's supplied by the superior mesenteric artery, which is um, at vertebral body um, L1 level. Um, both of these, foregut and midgut, are supplied by the vagus nerve, which regulate the parasympathetic activity, and then the hindgut, which is the distal one-third of the transverse colon to the uh, rectum, the superior sort of two-thirds of the rectum, or the pectinate line, or the dentate line, as some people call it. Um, and that's supplied by the inferior mesenteric artery, which is um, vertebral body L3. It's mainly supplied by um, pelvic uh, nerve supplies and sympathetic chains of the pelvic uh, branches, as opposed to the vagus nerve, which supplies the foregut and the midgut mainly. So the pectinate line, or the dentate line, is the junction between the um, hindgut and the proctoderm which is, marks the, the, the embryological difference between the uh, endoderm and the ectoderm. Their lymph drainage is also different. Uh, above this line, it'll be to the internal um, iliac uh, lymph nodes, whereas below will be superficial inguinal lymph nodes, which is important when you have uh, low-riding uh, rectal malignancies to see which lymph nodes are involved. Uh, we'll give you an idea as to where about it is um, in the rectum. And also, slightly less glamorous, but hemorrhoids, um, if they're above the line, you have painless hemorrhoids, as uh, the nerve supply will be um, from the viscera, so it'll be quite difficult um, to interpret, whereas below it's to the, uh, the rectal uh, nerves, which you can uh, pinpoint exactly, unfortunately, where that pain is. And then above this line, it will be columnar epithelial, as most of the digestive tract is, whereas below it will be stratified squamous, which will progressively get more keratin in it until it basically becomes um, congruent with your skin. So the celiac trunk, which uh, is T12, which supplies the foregut, which as we said is the lower end of the esophagus and the stomach, all the way down to the second part of the duodenum, and it has three main branches off of it, the left gastric, the splenic, and the common hepatic. The left gastric supplies the lesser curvature of the stomach and the lower, pole, lower um, distal end of the esophagus. The splenic goes posterior to the stomach and gives off short gastrics which supply the um, greater curvature and also obviously splenic artery as the name suggests supplies the spleen and also parts of the pancreas. And then the common hepatic. Whenever you see the word common it means that this divides into two and it will give you the proper hepatic and the gastroduodenal and off the gastroduodenal will come the right gastroepiploic which supply the greater curvature. So the left curvature is the le le uh, left gastric um, whereas the short gastric and the right ga gastroepiploic will supply the uh, greater curvature of the stomach. So other important uh, blood vessels to note in with regards to EMQs is that the left gastric is part of the portal uh, circulation, so the left gastric vein, and that will go into the azygos vein, which is systemic, so you have a portal anastomote um, bridge, and that basically means that if you have elevated portal hypertension, you will dilate your left gastric veins, and these can um, rupture and you have esophageal varices. And also with regards to duodenal ulcers, if they erode through the wall, they're likely to take out the gastroduodenal artery, and that's going to be ca cause the source of uh, bleeding in a posterior duodenal ulcer. So the SMA, or superior mesenteric artery, comes off at L1, and it supplies from the duodenum and the pancreas all the way down to the uh, transverse colon. It gives off the inferior pancreduodenal artery, the ileocecal artery, which gives blood supply to the ileum, cecum, and the appendix. And uh, a bit of quiz knowledge: the most ligated um, artery in the human body is the body to the appendix, so the appendicular artery. And then the right colon to the ascending, sorry, the right colic, colic to the ascending colon, middle colic to the transverse colon, and that's where the SMA ends. The IMA uh, picks off where it left off, and, it, and that's at L3, and it gives the left colic, and there's a, 
um, a watershed area between the left colic and the middle colic where um, they share blood supply. And there's also the sigmoid branches which supply obviously the sigmoid colon and then the superior rectal which goes down to the superior part of the rectum and the inferior, um, the middle and inferior rectal arteries come from the internal iliac and the pudendal artery respectively so that again um, documents the difference in the, the pectate line or the dentate line as to where the blood supply is so the IMA uh, gives a superior rectal which supplies the top part of the rectum whereas after this line it's supplied by the middle and inferior rectal arteries which come off the internal iliac and pudendal artery respectively.